I think what I enjoy the most about quantum computers is actually trying to build them. So really like hands-on, really understand the device physics in there and how to make it, yeah, make the device work for you basically, how to make, make it do what it should do. The story of this paper really starts in 2017 where a few groups have started to work out blueprints of a quantum classical processor. After a series of demonstrations which has shown that silicon-based qubits are a promising candidate for large-scale quantum computing. In this work recently published on Nature Electronics, we combine radio frequency measurement techniques with concepts of random access which is found in modern memory devices. Using this we address the challenges towards readout of a large-scale device by reading out one device after another using the same line. So to implement such a cryogenic control circuit, we decided with our colleagues at Hitachi Cambridge Laboratory and CAA Letty to use CMOS technology. CMOS technology is the basis for conventional processors and has driven the digital revolution we've seen over the last decades due to reliable fabrication of complex circuits consisting of millions or billions of transistors. So in our proof of concept experiment we combine CMOS transistors with CMOS quantum devices all on the same chip. First we had to check that these transistors actually still work at cryogenic temperatures because for a selected qubit they should allow the readout signal to be delivered without disturbance. Additionally, for a deselected qubit, the signal should be blocked and the qubit should not be disturbed. The transistors we chose actually worked quite well and we showed sequential readout of two quantum devices. However, the approach can be easily extended to a large number of devices where each individual cell consists of a CMOS transistor and a qubit each. Using this, we can make a two-dimensional array of quantum devices which can be randomly addressed similar to conventional memory chips and then read out all of these devices using a single line. We start off with a big wafer, which we cut into small pieces each still containing many transistor and quantum devices. To actually measure the device and actually bring it to life, we need to make connections from the nanoscale device to the outside world. For this we take the chip and glue it onto a printed circuit board and we use wires thinner than a hair to actually make the connection to the device. Now that we have the chip wired to our PCB, we take this PCB and connect it to a cylindrical sample holder which we can then attach to our, the coldest part of our dilution refrigerator which also makes the electrical connection from room temperature to our device. We are very proud of this work because we managed to demonstrate that CMOS technology can help to solve the challenges towards a large-scale quantum computer. So maybe the quantum computer chips might not look so different from conventional processors. From the circuit models which we have developed, we could next go ahead and design fully optimized and integrated multi-qubit circuits. So there's lots of exciting work ahead. Mm -hmm.